Hi, Christoph. Uh, thank you for coming back. And this is our last session. And yeah. uh, well, we are ready. We are already okay, good. I've tried to share my screen now. Okay, thank you. And the session is recorded, so uh, we can go on. Uh, okay, now we see your screen. Okay, very good. Okay, I'm guessing you cannot read it. Okay, so just it's um, quite a scary. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> can you read this? Just, um, just some notes from the from the to answer some of the questions from the last session. I hope you can read this. I've updated the the web page now. Uh, <clears throat> there are the, the slides from the workshop, but here I've added a link to the Rebound X documentation. If you click here, you land on the. the the project of Rebound Extras, which was um, developed by uh, Didi Mayo, uh, Daniel Damaho, and there, this is a, a library of extension to the standard Rebound packages, and you find here already where is this um, extensions for gravitational effects, different drag forces. Um, Orbit modifications. Let's see here. There is a section on general rel relativity where they add post-Newtonian post -Newtonian corrections from GR. So, since there was this question in the, in the chat before, you may have a look here. Maybe there's already an implementation for your problem which you can uh, use. Um, okay. Then I have also added. A link to this paper by Christoph Burger about the coupling of rebound with SPH. Unfortunately, there's not a lot uh, said, uh, not a lot mentioned about the techniques. So if you're interested in this code, then drop me a mail or to Christoph Burger. Uh, what we have done here, in principle, this is a whole, it's not a whole new code, but it's a C code which is the interface between rebound and uh, our SPH code. So what I would like to do now is just to show you um, a small example about the code running. Here I will just make the um, increase the font size <laughs> so you can read it. Uh, few increase font size. So let's see. We can pop this up so you can see anything. Can you read this? I hope so. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> we can see it, uh, but uh, if uh, if you have any problem, uh, participants may uh, just go to full screen, and in full screen, uh, well, it's easy to read all the code. Thank you. Okay. Just, we have a lot of space here. So this is just a simple 100 line, I guess, uh, Python uh, example. It's also in the rebound repository. That's why I chose this. I just want to go through this. I will look at this screen here. So I'm sorry that I can't look at you, but this is uh, where I can read this. So we uh, start here with the simple line which implements uh, the simulation and then we choose here the integrator in this case IAS 15 which we don't have to do essentially because this is the default integrator since we don't need the slide then we just add up uh, a sum at the center so if you don't add any more information then the, the rest of the um, variables are set to zero so we add a sun and two planets to Jupiter-like planets, which are already quite close. Uh, so one at one AU, and then an even more massive one at 1.25 AU. Then we move the system to the center of mass system. Uh, then I set uh, a value that 
as soon as two particles are closer than 1.015, this is the principle of the value from the Hilton sphere for these values here above with M and uh, A. Uh, 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 0.15 is the hill sphere of sorry uh, uh, we have some problem in it's hearing you um, uh, yes. uh, we have some problems in hearing you could you please uh, log out uh, could you okay. please uh, just log out and log in again Or maybe uh, turn off your webcam, okay? If you turn off your webcam, uh, okay. Now he's gone. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, you turned off your webcam. Please continue. Uh, that might uh, solve the problem. <laughs> okay, but can you hear me now? Okay. Okay. Please continue. Thank you. Okay, I'm just logging out, okay? I leave the webcam off, okay? Okay, great, thanks. Okay, okay. so the best thing is the code, it's not me. <laughs> okay. So um, what I've added here is uh, a switch that as soon as one of the two or one of the or the planets get closer than this 0 0.15, which is approximately the Hill sphere in AU here, um, then the code throws an error, a rebound encounter error, and stops essentially. So if I don't set this, then the code would run, and we would have a uh, the, the, the planets will just um, scatter around. I mean, the, these are very close. Okay, then here um, I have this function, which is just here uh, and with NumPy using, I don't know if you're familiar with Python, I just assume this now. Here we built a NumPy array uh, with a number of outputs for here 100 orbits. So at one AU, one period is two pi if you have a solar mass planet in the, in, the, in the center and the gravitational constant is one, then one orbital period is two pi. This here, this means we have a vector with 1,000 um, uh, steps here between zero and 100 orbits. And in this following, here we integrate now. Uh, with sim integrate to all of these subtypes, and then we calculate the distance between our two um, uh, planets here, which is particle one and particle two, simply here by adding them. Okay, what I do here now is that I um, remember these in distances in, uh, in the non array to plot them afterwards. Okay. And let's see if this runs now. Oops. Also pop it up here a little bit. Uh, make, to make the window smaller. I hope you can see now my screen, the terminal. Um, this is a, a terminal of a MacBook. Um, and it's slow. No. Just wait. Okay. Now we'll run it. See how long it goes. Probably not so long. And okay, we see here that we found a close encounter. Um, we look at the plot. Try to make this bigger. Uh, and this is the distance between our two planets here, the blue curve. And you see that here at already well, nearly five orbits, 
they came so close that this exit function, this exception was triggered and the code stopped. Um, okay, so you see with not a lot of code here, you can um, test here the stability with, um, for, for the sun and the two planets. Okay, just as a small example. Another example would be um, also as the, let's see here, I've got here a small example for gas track. Um, I hope you can see this in a minute. My laptop is slowing down a little bit. Everyone is exhausted now, <laughs> even the hardware. Okay. Okay. Wait and see. So if you can't see anything yet, yeah, okay. Now something should appear. Okay. Again, so this is an example for adding a very simple track force. Um, if I've had add here standard approach, how to set up a simulation. I add a sun type particle at the center, then again a Jovian planet and one AU. This is the track coefficient that we will need later. And here I just print out the uh, semi-major axis of the first particle. And then I add here, I just define a track force, which is, uh, which reduces the acceleration according to uh, track coefficient times the velocity of the particle one. Um, and I tell the rebound backend that there is an additional force that should be called. And so this is a function pointer to this function. And what I also have to tell is since um, standard gravitational forces are not velocity dependent, I have to set this switch to one or to two and then um, rebound takes care that the acceleration is a function of the velocity too. And if we integrate this, then let's see if we don't add any. Oops. Very slow now. Try to do this. Anyway, we set the coefficient to zero, then nothing should happen. And we have here. Um, this integration over 10, uh, over five orbits. And you see that the um, semi major axis doesn't change. So this is just a floating point round of error. And um, if I add now, let's say a small track force, track coefficient, to save, yeah, then run it again, then I would expect that the semi-major axis is much smaller now, and this uh, Jovian planet has migrated towards um, the central star. So again, this takes, okay, so you see we have uh, smaller semi-major axis here now after five orbits and so in this sense you could add let's say you have you want to model type 2 migration or type 1 migration of a uh, planet around a uh, star or something and you don't want to have the hydro then you could add here effective forces or something or uh, let's say pointing robertson and um, track forces and so on so um then the next example, what I wanted to show you is from the exercises. Uh, open the exercises here and scroll. No, I don't scroll here. I open this in another window. Okay, let's close this. Mm. In the exercises we have here this nice exercise of the Kirkwood gaps. So 
by the gravitational in the interaction of Jupiter and the Sun and the Mars, we ha you ha have these gaps in the, uh, the semi-major axis distribution. So on the, on the, on the x-axis, you have the semi-major axis of the asteroids, and on the y-axis, the bin number of asteroids. So the counted number of asteroids in a uh, 0.0005 AU bin. So you bin up all asteroids and count them, and then you get this nice distribution. And you see that they're in the mean motion, astro um, mean motion resonances with Jupiter, so where one asteroid, one period of an asteroid is uh, in, in during three periods of one asteroid, Jupiter does one period. Here in these mean motion resonances, these asteroids are thrown away out of the asteroid belt, and so you get uh, this nice king sinks in the uh, Kirkwood, uh, in the asteroid belts. These are called Kirkwood gaps. Um, we have an uh, exercise on this in the exercises, and you can you can just for this case I've also uploaded the solution or one of the solution um, on the website. You can play around a little bit. This is also something that has to run for a long time, okay? Because you see these long-term evolution only for long simulation times and but i want to just go above uh, go over the code and show you how in this case simple uh, you can do s s s uh, these kinds of simulations with uh, gravitating particles tracer particles uh, and to do some outputs all in Python without the need for high performance C libraries or something, just in a nice Python script. Now we have to wait until this opens. Okay. So this is a file that I put online on this web page. Um, again, just uh, numpy and rebound, matplotlib for plotting, and just for the to, to show you how to use different um, units we've used here. Uh, just SI units. This is something that I probably won't do if you do the simulation because uh, this is normally also done with G equals 1 and AU and M sun units. So just how you would use a different um, gravitational constant is by setting this sim G to some value. Then we add the solar mass. Then we add uh, the position of Jupiter at a certain date don't don't know when with the velocity in SI units don't do this at home right <laughs> by with this um, command we add to Jupiter then we add mass later on and then we will add 10,000 inactive tracer particles between 2 and 4 AU uh, and 2 AU for the asteroid belt. And yes, Hamid Ritza, yes, um, that, this is already uploaded here. I remember where is, where is my browser? Let me guess here. This is this file, exercise Kirkwood gaps. This is already online. Um, you can just download it. But first, try it on your own. <laughs> okay, so we add here. What we create here is a linear, uh, um, um, values for the initial semi-major axis from 2 AU to 4 AU, just a limb space with NumPy, and then we add for these different kinds of um, semi-major axis with a random um, mean anomaly and a random eccentricity with a maximum random eccentricity of 0.5, we add uh, these tracer particles to uh, the simulation now they, they have all masses equal zero. Here I've used the leapfrog integrator because it's the, the, the um, fastest one. And we just want to see the effect of these um, um, gap formation. And then this is 
just values that I need because we have SI units, okay? And this is the vector for the simulation time. We're now simulation 1,000 years, and we set a time step to uh, for this uh, leapfrog integrator. The leapfrog integrator needs a, a fixed time step. It's a symplectic integrator, and uh, this is just the Newton's and uh, Newton's Kepler's third law to get the orbital period for one mass object at two AU, and then we set. Uh, we say that the time step should be one hundredth of this orbital period. Okay, we have only three active planets, uh, gravitational masses, the Sun, Jupiter, and Mars. We move everything to the center of mass system, and then we integrate. This is the integration routine, the loop, and what I did here is that I want to have a lot of output files uh, of the sim which uh, calculate or which are where the the, um, the semi major axis and the eccentricity of the simulation of the tracer particles are written to a file, and uh, I will I also generate a plot here of this um, eccentricity over semi major axis. Then what I haven't said so far yet, if you, I mean, since this runs for quite a long time, you can also just checkpoint, save the simulation, so later on you can easily load it back. Just say, um, for example, I've got here now already, since I've run this last night, I've got a file um, checkpoint bin, and I could now also just restart my simulation from there by, say, um, sim equals rebound uh, dog simulation and I just state here now this checkpoint file on you can do this checkpoint dot bin then rebound should read okay and should read these files and you see here this is all the information that is stored uh, in this binary file which is enough to restart the simulation from there. Um, so in this case, this is always advisable to just add some saves, saves so that I don't have to well, restart the simulation from scratch and lose some information. So the code at the end is just for the binning of the particles, for forget about this for the time being. And um, so if you stop this, I guess it ran on my laptop for 1,000 year, uh, years, it ran a half an hour, and I got some files. This is um, open orbit. Let's look at the first file. So this is the uh, .png. Wait a minute here. This is the initial distribution of my tracer particles. These are the asteroids that are distributed randomly between 2 and 4 AU with a maximum eccentricity of 0.5. And, and then I have run this for uh, last afternoon. It's the last file. Here, I ran this no wrong file. I ran this for approximately yeah thirty five minutes for one thousand years. Let's see if we can already see something about the formation of any gaps or disturbances. You see that after 1,000 years already, you see that here some of the tracer particles are disturbed and probably we'll see there are particles scattered to higher eccentricities and the beginning of the, of the cleaning of these um, values for 
semi major x is higher than um, 3.3, I guess, here, yeah. So we, for values higher than 3.3 here, if you look at the plot, these particles will be, will be thrown out of the simulation. But you see that um, you will, uh, where is it? You will need a longer time uh, for this case, for this exercise to see something. This will take several, probably one million years or so. So the asteroid belt wasn't cleared in a day, so to say. Okay, um, this is essentially um, the best thing what you can do now is look at the exercises, start playing around a little bit. Um, and if you, I mean, I can also provide some solutions for them. We have some code snippets in the exercises that are enough to get get you running, so to say. Um, and the first two examples are, I think, directly implemented for the on the by stability of this uh, Saturn rings. There is. There's also a code example, I guess. If not, I can provide this. So yeah, I can. We can talk about this later. I've got solutions for this, I guess, for all cases, um, for all exercises. Um, but I think it's better just to play around a little bit for yourself first, and then uh, see how you come along. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Christoph, for this interesting talk. Uh, I mean, in spite of, I think in your office it should be very hot now. It, it's more, I mean, it's afternoon, basically. And yeah. I think the number of the participants, we have 41 participants for in this session, I mean, at the end of this session, and I think that shows that we all enjoy a lot. So thanks a lot for all of your time and for your, um, for your, I mean, uh, generous, uh, for for I mean for accepting to uh, give talk about embody for us. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. You you're welcome. It was fun. And Thank I you. Hope you. Have have a lot of fun. And if you have still any questions, just drop me an email or something. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. There are also some comments that people enjoy it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. I'm sure even there's still, yeah, Peter Schoen. Yeah, so even in German, so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kirchhoff. Uh, let's all thank our speaker. Uh, we yeah. hope to see you here in Iran. <laughs> but of course, after uh, uh, coronavirus. <laughs> stay well, everybody, yeah? Stay, stay healthy. Yeah, of course. You too. Yeah, I, I'll do my very best. Okay. So yeah. enjoy the workshop for the rest of the week. I, I think you have a very good program. Uh, yeah, uh, and tomorrow uh, we'll have here Professor uh, Hanawa from Ch uh, Chiba University. Yeah, you were talking uh, about uh, gravity, right? Yeah. And uh, on Friday, I think uh, we're, uh, well, on Thursday, we're going to have uh, here Dr. Uh, Vaida uh, from India. And then on Friday, uh, we have, uh, we'll have a, a short session for uh, problem solving and discussions. Okay. So, uh, and uh, we need to solve uh, the problems that you provided us. Uh, I hope that we... Uh, we managed to solve them. I'm, I'm sure that th these are the easier problems of the week, I guess. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no, no MHD and, uh, yeah, no infection. Okay, so, okay, I say goodbye. I okay. hope to see you all someday, okay, and then stay well and enjoy the rest of the week. Ah, I mean, that's uh, just one question. Yeah, sorry, we can also... Okay, uh, there are questions. I didn't know that the, uh, we have questions. Uh, I can't see the question. Do you see the question? I mean, Reza just asked if it's possible to, to pose one question. 
Uh, well, uh, do we have uh, just one question? Yeah, if possible. Yeah. Amit, okay. please go on and ask you a question. Thank you. It's yeah. I hope it was not too uh, too practical. I mean, I always think that the, a lot of the theory stuff you can learn on your own from books. So uh, I always think it makes more fun if you have a little bit of practical points. But I'm not sure. So different flow simulations. What do you think? Um, yes, th that's. The, the thing is that I mean, it's a, this SPH simulations are very sophisticated since SPH is a, a hyper code for compressible media. And I guess for such Debris Strow simulation, it would be the, the first thing that I would start with would be with, uh, uh, with an effective force for the, for the Debris flow. So you would have add something like a from the collisional uh, module from rebound to add something like viscous forces or some effective viscous forces before you do explicit SPH simulations because the SPH simulations are already right computational expensive I would say. What we trying to do with SPH and rebound for the time being is also to model such um, well um, co coagulational growth or something, but I don't know if if an effective force just added to rebound isn't not as good as this. So I would start with rebound with some additional effective force added to rebound and then see what happens and maybe later on couple it with SPH if this answers your question. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Then I say goodbye. Have a good Thank time. You.